Hey guys, so our three month visa was coming to an end in French Polynesia, so we were rushing to get out of there in time. But we definitely wanted to visit the famous Bora Bora Island before leaving, so we sailed there to see what all the fuss is about, but end up smashing right into the dock just as we're about to leave. So I'm Colin, and this is the crew of Pale Revival. From hurricane damaged, to broken bulkheads, and getting struck by lightning not once but twice, to being the strongest and fastest Lagoon 450 on the planet. We are now sailing 5,000 miles from Mexico to New Zealand, my home, before continuing our circumnavigation. So subscribe to follow our journey around this beautiful planet. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? Finally, this chain has arrived. It's a half inch stainless steel chain from Chromox and it is gonna be a game changer. We're gonna get rid of this rusty POS of a chain. So this chain always piles up on itself as well. Allegedly, the stainless steel one just is so smooth and shiny that it just kind of like flakes itself. So as you can see, we decided it was well worth it to do this exercise in the marina with our bow to the dock. Somebody. <coughs> Uh, has burned the head on the allen bolt so i know as soon as i put too much force on that it's just going to spin and then we're in real trouble i'm not going to risk it so i'm going to heat it up to try melt the loctite turn it onto a runny liquid again and then try back it out because this is a special little setup here can't afford to lose that oh got it First thing I wanted to check before swapping out 300 foot of chain was to make sure the Chromox chain fit nicely in our gypsy as expected. Okay, I think we're good. So now um, we're gonna dump the rest of that old chain. Look at the color difference. Bling, bling. <laughs> yeah, what's up, yo, yo. <laughs> you let me explain why we got this chain. It's because it was super expensive. Um, it is 318 stainless steel, not 316. It's lighter and stronger than that hunk of junk there. It's all rust? Yeah. So the last bit of the old chain is just a little bit of anchor road. So I'm gonna re-splice this onto the new chain. Send it back in. Wow. Look at the difference. Chain. Okay, it's time to uh, put the new chain in. This will be really interesting to watch how this chain uh, sort of flakes itself into the anchor locker there. The problem, even just trying to get the old one out, is that the chain will pile up and then it'll topple over. And so the chain will be sort of under a whole bunch of other chain. And then it'll pile up again and then topple over. So that kept happening. Hopefully we've solved a whole bunch of problems with this new chain. We have to clean up all of this rusty shit from the old chain. But guys, there are many different types of stainless steel and they're built to different qualities. So do your homework if you're gonna buy a stainless steel chain. This stuff is from Germany. It's called Chromox. It's been tried and tested for years. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys are interested in it. But they give you a three year warranty. So yeah, with this chain, we're never gonna deal with this rusty crap ever again. Stuck. By the way, this is the first time that we've been pulled up at a marina for it not being in Lagoon 450. I always say Lagoon 450, which it is. And uh, for the first time they said, that's not a 450, that's a 465. So they charged me, it went from $72 a night to $80 a night. Go figure. So as we were preparing for a 1500 mile sail to Tonga, we had a few crew changes. We said goodbye to Katie, who was actually going to come back again in a couple of months. This trip has just been incredible, and I can't thank all of you guys enough. You really do feel like family. It has changed my life. 
it really has. So yeah, I would just say when you have an opportunity, take it. What's the worst that can happen? And Christian, who had come to do some surfing with us for a few weeks. This is a special place, a special people, a special boat, and that's what I'm looking for, like, that I can be myself and, and I receive the same from them. So that's, for me, what I, I appreciate the most. But also two new crew, including our oldest ever crew member. So we did a quick post on, on Patreon, and we had a whole bunch of people apply, um, but one person happened to be right here, and her name is Shannon, and she came to the boat and we sort of interviewed her and we think she's gonna be amazing. She works on a sailboat. It just seemed like the perfect fit. This is so different for me. Now I'll get to really be able to enjoy these places and not be working. So we had one other spot and uh, we interviewed a guy called Don Johnson. He's just turned 70. We rang him on his birthday. Hey, uh, we just wanted to let you know that uh, you might as well pack your bags as you're coming to Tahiti. Are you shitting me, man? <laughs> All right, cool. That's the best birthday present ever. Hey, <laughs> and we asked him what it would mean to him to be able to do a trip like this. This trip I'm gonna be on is going to be a trip of a lifetime. There is no question about it. And for us guys that are getting up there in age, we don't have that many more years left. And if you pass something up, you know what Colin says, you know, we may not have 20 years left, who knows? It's just made me super keen to keep doing this. Um, whenever we can, I think we'll invite um, our patron along and just, we almost get to live vicariously through them. Yeah. It, it, uh, rekindles my excitement as well for uh, for this lifestyle. So it's nice to do these things. I'm pumped. So with the new crew assembled, we started making our way towards the last couple of islands in French Polynesia. It had been a while since we were offshore, so the crew were taking a moment to adjust. It was rough. Waves slamming everywhere. It was definitely crazy. It's a weird adjustment, but I like it. I'm trying to sleep is just not good. You know, it was uh, interesting. Didn't know that the boat made so much noise, but of course I can understand that going through this kind of wave, these kind of waves. This wave just hit, came over the bow. It's actually one of the biggest sprays I've ever seen on Parlay. We just sat there and the nav light lit the wall of water up and it just came straight towards us. We were both like, oh shit. And then it just soaked us. And then we're just cracking up laughing because it was just so out of the blue. It was a tough old passage and we were relieved to find shelter in behind the outer reef of Huahine, which looked absolutely stunning by the way. But I had a very close eye on the weather to get to Tonga, so I had a feeling it would be best if we kept moving. So in typical parlay fashion, we've made a last minute decision to leave Huahine today. We had a great sleep on anchor and it's time to just start moving again. So onwards and upwards. Such is life when living at sea. Your itinerary is often determined by weather or things like crew flying in or visas running out. But we always try to look on the bright side of every situation. Champagne sailing right now. 10 knots, right on the beam. We're doing 6.8. Don's happy, Shannon's happy. Everything's good. And also taking the opportunity to learn some fundamentals of sailing. If you're an airplane guy, a wing is the same as a sail. In terms of lift. It creates lift. lift. If you put the sail this way, it becomes a wing. Yeah. And it lifts that way. Yeah. When you put it that way, it's lifting the boat that way. Yeah. Because of the difference of pressure. Yeah, this whole brain, I don't know how much it'll absorb, but I'm going to do my best and absorb as much as I possibly can so that, as Colin said, maybe I can call myself a sailor at the end of this. The fact that Don had left his comfortable life in North Carolina to sail with a crew that he had only just seen on his computer to go offshore sailing to a country he had hardly ever heard of spoke volumes about how important it was for him to be living his best life. And so it was an absolute pleasure to have him around. We were soon approaching the infamous Bora Bora, which is a popular destination for the rich and famous. And the resorts are extortionately priced. So we were pretty stoked to be coming here with our own accommodation sorted. Hey Bora Bora, got another 10 miles to go though and the wind just picked up to 10 knots. So we're gonna put out the code D, sail around the west side of Bora Bora. 
I don't think we've ever had the Cody out with the head sole at the same time. No, that didn't really work out. I thought it was at 60 degrees, so I thought the wind would catch both of them and would have like a double head sole situation. Nah. So we had made it inside the outer reef, but realized that navigating inside was quite a challenge. So we're trying to get to the southeastern corner. The only way down there is to come through all of the shallow stuff. So we've got eight feet of water right here. The incredible crystal clear waters made everything seem even more shallow than it actually was. So we crept through the reef with caution. So it's a fairly tight squeeze here as we have to zigzag between all of these markers. Super tight. Woo, made it. That was close, Lindo. I want to show you guys one thing about this anchor, which is just phenomenal. It's got a lead tip in it, so when it anchors, when it digs in, uh, it just buries itself immediately. So I'll jump in the water, I'll, I'll just let you guys see it for yourself because a good anchor is so important. That's how you sleep at night, that's your comfort, that's your reassurance that you're not going to end up on a reef and become a shipwreck. So I think it's something that's worth spending money on. If there's anything worth spending money on, it's probably your ground tackle. And that was perfect. Anchor dug in. And then we spun, the boat spun around 180. Jamie backed down on it. The point of the anchor just swiveled and just dug straight back in. It didn't drag even one meter. And it looks so good with the chain combo. And then the bridle, we've got the ultra, ultra anchor grab. And that uh, grabs the um, chain so that um, you're not leaving any of that weight of the, the boat on the windlass. It's all on the bridle. But we're anchored in five feet of water here. So um, the bridle's almost touching the, the, the seabed. This has to be the most beautiful water as it changes colors through the blue spectrum and into aqua. I didn't know any place like this existed in the world. It's unbelievable how beautiful it is. I can't get over it. It must be the color of the sand because it's just water. It's the same ocean that we had everywhere, but it's just so blue. Bora Bora has the bluest water I have ever seen. The island itself only has an area of 12 square miles, which is surrounded by an incredible lagoon inside the barrier reef. You can clearly see why this place is so popular, because it is truly one of the most picturesque places you can imagine. But unfortunately it is now pretty much unaffordable for your average person to holiday here, as even the cheapest of hotels will run you into the thousands after a couple of days. So we felt extremely lucky to be able to see this place by boat, and all it would cost us is a small anchoring or mooring fee. Yet another reason why we are so grateful to be living the life we do and how all of us, including Don, made some risky but worthwhile decisions to choose a life at sea for a while. What's happening this morning? Eagle rays, oh f**k. <laughs> <laughs> Sting rays. No, cut. <laughs> Manta rays. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, if I was any more excited, I'd jump off this boat. <laughs> <laughs> you color coordinated again? I am, I'm color coordinated. This is the way us old folks I'm referred to as the ancient one. This is the way we dress. We want everyone to notice just how freaking old we are. You gotta have blue on blue. When I was young, there was no such thing as this color. <laughs> it just wasn't around, it was just all black and white. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the way it was back then. Okay, so the guys are gonna go find manta rays. There's a spot, what, about three miles that way? Um, where there's meant to be some manta rays that come cruising around. Magnificent in the water. Absolutely magnificent creatures. They just like swimming around like they don't have a care in the world. Just slow, gentle, 
and it's incredible. Again, the guys had just swam with manta rays for free, which tourists here pay hundreds of dollars to do. The overwater bungalows were absolutely stunning though, and my curiosity got the better of me, so I started looking at prices for a room around here and was absolutely shocked. Some were $3,000 per night, some were $10,000 per night. It was mind blowing how much it cost to enjoy this slice of paradise. I messaged a few resorts to ask if I could come and film what it was like there, but they all answered the same thing, that I would need to buy a day pass for hundreds of dollars. Well actually, one resort did end up offering me a free room if I filmed the facilities, but guess what? We were already halfway to the Cook Islands when they offered, so you'll just have to enjoy these drone shots instead, guys. We're on our way to go to a grocery shop right now. This is our final provision before we get to Tonga, so let's grab what we need, all the last minute items, because we won't be seeing another grocery store probably for another 15 days or so. It's my favorite That's activity. Really? <laughs> it really is. Oh, it stresses me out. We're gonna go do some groceries, but it's so cool. A few of the islands have had this facility where you can just dock for free and come in and out and do some groceries or whatever. Not many places you see that, so that's really cool. This is definitely the freshest produce that I've seen so far in French Polynesia. But while we were shopping, the tide had risen and there was barely any dock left for our fenders to be up against. What's worse, the wind had picked up to 15 knots and it was blowing directly onto the dock. So I had to bounce off a stern fender to get the bow around. But it all went a little bit pear-shaped. We gave the dock a little love tap. Two fenders we had in the, on the stern, one popped out and then we tried to bring it forward and then the corner of the boat actually touched the dock and knocked some gel coat off. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut a little bit of this tape back and then I'm gonna give it a good sand and then we'll put a bit of cover seal and gel coat in it and we'll try and reshape the back before we put a color match gel coat on it. The worst thing for it is the UV. Um, it's pretty much out of the water the whole time anyway, but the sunlight will deteriorate the fiberglass over time. But it doesn't happen that quickly, but while we're here, might as well just uh, sort it out. Sanded it, I'm just going to give it a little wipe down, and then I'll mix up the gel coat and cover seal. So I'm just going to give the gel coat a good shake. I'm going to actually pour 50 mils of gel coat, then I'll slowly add the cover seal. I don't want it too thick and I don't want it too runny, so we'll just slowly add it. Okay guys, so I've mixed it up, just there. So what you normally do, add a little bit more because when you put the hardener in, it makes it a little bit runnier. So I've overdone a little bit of cover seal, but once I've dropped the hardener in, it'll put a bit more liquid into it. Okay, so there we go. Once it dries, I'll give it a little bit of a, probably a wet sand and then we'll probably have to fill it a little bit more. All right, guys, we're out of here. We're gonna pick up off the mooring and start heading to Mal... What's it? Where are we going? Malpija. Malpija. So the beauty of Bora Bora had really lived up to expectations, but it was time to head towards the next and final atoll in French Polynesia called Malpija, which was 130 miles away. Look at this, this is that three meter swell. <laughs> Look at the current flying out of the channel here. So, you know, Jamie and I had this bed. I gave him two to one, and he has to catch a tuna. If no. a, oh, he has to catch any fish, that's right. If a fish jumps onto the boat, that doesn't count, because he didn't catch it, the boat did. Hey, now, to everyone out there, how can you make the rules up after the bet's been made? Okay, well Leave then. a comment if that's Wait, so you would have counted that? Is that what you said? Yeah, well, I got a fish in the boat, didn't I? <laughs> no, you didn't. What do you guys think? If Jamie bets he can get a fish on the boat, does a flying fish landing on the deck count? There's a lot at stake here, guys. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And we'll see you next Sunday as we start the journey all the way sailing to Tonga.